one and all for coming. We're called the Refugee Art Project. We're just a loose collective of artists and academics who are united by a concern for the well-being of refugees in detention. This exhibition is the culmination of about seven months of art classes uh, in the Villawood Detention Centre and trips to other detention centres in Melbourne and Queensland. We got into it uh, simply as a meaningful activity that we thought would be um, interesting, an interesting way to find out about asylum seekers in Australian detention centres uh, and hopefully a good way of helping uh, asylum seekers. Uh, from the art classes though, we very quickly realised that we had a number of excellent works um, that would be fantastic for an exhibition. These works are particularly interesting. Um, they're made by Hazara refugees from Afghanistan and they refer directly to the experience, I think, of the Hazara people. Um, Hazaras uh, have been, were terribly persecuted under the Taliban and remain very unsafe to this day. These images of children are particularly interesting, not least because they were drawn by a child. Uh, the boy who did this was only 16 when he came into detention. He's currently 17, uh, and these were drawn within the Broadmeadows Detention Centre, which houses unaccompanied minors. This image behind me um, refers to a particular warlord who's quite infamous for killing Hazaras a number of years ago and who's currently in the Karzai government. So there's some very strong political references. These tools and implements are particularly interesting. Um, these were made by an Iranian refugee. He was actually an, an, an electrical engineer in Iran uh, and he was courted by the Islamic regime which wanted him to design weapons for crowd control, uh, including a tank that fires boiling water at protesters. He refused on moral grounds and then had to flee Iran. Uh, and since he's been in detention, I think he's made do with the materials available to him, which is what makes these so fascinating. Uh, detainees aren't allowed to have steel implements, so he's found parts to design hammers and other things. Uh, and this is actually a massage machine made from an old DVD player. And here we have a paintbrush and palette knife made from plastic cutlery. And the hairs of this brush were made with uh, hair from a cat's tail. So they're particularly uh, ingenious for using the materials available, the sparse materials available within the detention centre. Behind me we have some drawings made with instant coffee diluted in water uh, painted onto paper. These are especially, this is a tradition I think within the Villawood Detention Centre. It was begun by an Iraqi refugee who for a time was detained in the Philippines and during that period he had no access to paints, which painting was his hobby. Uh, so he started to paint with instant coffee uh, diluted in water straight onto the paper and when he came to the Villawood Centre he continued that tradition and then taught an Indonesian uh, refugee. Uh, and so these works are by uh, that person. So there's, there's this interesting tradition of coffee, coffee paintings which is developed specifically within Villawood. An interesting category, I think, of works that came from our art lessons are those which refer to the symbols and motifs of Australian nationalism. Um, refugees in detention see themselves as future Australians and I think they project themselves forward, if you like, as future citizens of this country. They want to be Australian, in other words. And so the images behind me were made by um, a detainee in the Villawood Detention Centre. He actually drew this image on, on Australia Day. And what's interesting though is that he'd never seen Sydney Harbour. He'd never been there, he'd never seen the Sydney Opera House. So I think he's mining images of Australia, but from the internet which is actually the main portal, if you like, to the outside world for many detainees living in detention. But what's really fascinating, I think, are these works because they, they represent the hopes of refugees to begin a new life as Australians um, in security. This is wonderful. This is a replica model of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Uh, this is another example of food art uh, in our exhibition in which Detainees have made works from the food that the, that's available uh, in the canteen. So this has been made from straight spaghetti, which has been glued together. Um, we also have another work, it's a flour made from instant noodles and cheese. So um, I think that's another example of the resourcefulness of our detainees. 
We've done a number of classes with families uh, who've been recently released from detention, including a number of children, uh, some of whom have been very badly traumatised by the experience of travelling from Indonesia to Australia, the boat trip that many undertake. And so it's been very good to, uh, to get them together and to give art classes for these children. So the images behind me are photographs from a children's party plus examples of children's work. And I think this highlights the issue of children in detention because uh, under Labor, of course, we still have many more children uh, in Australian detention centres than were under than were in detention under during the Howard years. Art communicates on a universal level, and I think when one executes a, a drawing or a painting, there's something very intuitive about that, and one can express sentiments, feelings, moods, uh, and experiences which might otherwise be very difficult to verbalise. Um, and I think that was quite important. I hope that the, the art classes we've, we've conducted have had a therapeutic um, role for, for our detainees. Um, but art, especially the visual arts, I think is a very universal language. Um, and um, I think they, it's their opportunity to com communicate directly to the Australian public, if you like. Uh, and I think that's what makes our exhibition so special.